Hello, there's a new patch coming out on Thursday and uh, here are the patch notes and I have access to the test server so I will show you all these new units and uh, some other stuff and the new UI as well but let's go over this first so there's a new UI look and they didn't change how uh, how the UI works only the look it's uh, very good looking but uh, I was hoping they would like rework how the buttons work a little bit and now the MMR for the 2 vs 2 mode is separate which is great I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's team based or per player it's probably per player and then there's changes in the unit drop system and the first time I read this I was celebrating that they are finally like removing the extra supply from the free units but <laughs> this is not the not the case like the unit drop is the same as before but now you have to pay like 50 supplies or 100 supplies to get the units so it's a little bit less value which is in a good direction in my opinion and there's uh, three rare units and you can get the rare units from the free unit pack and once you get the rare unit it will be unlocked to you so you can build them there's no other way to build them and there's three guys saber dude which is like a it's like a crossover between a fortress and a sledgehammer then there's typhoon it's like a big mustang and then there's a fire badger which is like a mini vulcan and then they are announcing the curator program and that's how i'm getting access to the test server so now we have the patch notes the Patch notes were posted without these balance changes before I, I made this video without them. So I just remade the video with cutting and pasting the old videos I recorded. And uh, yeah, this is a new section if you have seen the other stuff before. So the photon coating changed. The normal photon coating is changed to 25 seconds and the reduction is reduced from 50 to 30 and the overlord photon coating is reduced from 50 to 30 but the duration is only 20 seconds and i think the overlord photon change is is super good it was like way way too powerful with all the free units but uh, the rhino photon coating is i don't like it at, at all the rhino was very good unit but it was due to the fact that you could trust the enemy tower with the with all your guys photoned i think the rhino needs a lot of help now this this is not a good change for the rhino while it is very good change for the photon i think they should have buffed the rhino at this patch and then the sledgehammer this doesn't make any sense to me i i think the sledgehammer is one of the best units in the game and while i haven't used the field maintenance that much i mainly use armor Sako said to me that his favorite tech is the field maintenance and I have seen it's it's very good with level sledges and it's it's a good technology and I think now it will be super broken with the cost reduction and the sledgehammer is already so good of a unit this doesn't make any sense to me but maybe this is due to the fact that uh, like I've seen all your guys comments on my YouTube videos and people people just keep thinking the Scorpion is a good unit in low MMR games and maybe it is, is a good unit there so maybe these changes are 
are because of it. Like maybe Sledgehammer is bad there because Scorpion is good there. But in reality the Scorpion is super bad and the Sledgehammer is super broken. And and now they are like doing the total opposite what I would do. They are <laughs> buffing the Sledgehammer and nerfing the Scorpion. But yeah, the, the Scorpion field maintenance, I think it, it it was one of the best technologies for them. It's best used as a frontline tank, tank. But what made it pretty pretty toxic was the free unit drops, like when you get a level 5 Scorpion and take field maintenance on it. But the same problem is, is with Sledgehammers. When you get a level 6 Sledge and put field maintenance on it, the enemy cannot kill it. Same with the Scorpion. I don't think these nerfs are... Uh, they don't matter to that situation. So these, these Sledge and Scorpion changes are super bad in my opinion. Then the Vulcan, the unlocking price is increased from 100 to 200. Many people have been pushing this issue a lot. I don't think it has been a problem. And now it uh, gets a small buff because of it also. I don't know. I don't have an opinion about this. I don't use Vulcan that much. Many other people use it. It's probably a good nerf. The Vulcan is quite strong. and. Uh, the new units, all the new rare units, they are like chaff clear units, or two of them are. So maybe they this nerf will make them better, more useful, because you can just you cannot always unlock the Vulcan. And then the Overlord, and this this is the this has been the the problem in the balance. Of the game like every single one of the overlord technologies have been uh, too good and the stats are too good and this uh, this going in the right direction but this isn't how I would change the overlord the ground cannon was certainly too strong, but I think the range overload combo is, is still stronger than the ground cannon. And just decreasing the attack and buffing the HP is kinda unimaginative. I would maybe make the overlord to clear chaff a lot worse, like reduce the splash distance. Re revert the buff that they made last time to make the Overlord missiles travel faster. I don't know. It it's a it's a good good direction, but I would have made it a little bit different myself. Then the Mustang has been a really sad unit in the in the free unit patch. Like uh, most of the time, the high leveled Mustangs, even with item, are just a waste of money. So I guess this is good. But it was, it's kind of scary to buff the Mustang, because there was a period in the game where the Mustang was uh, very good and super broken. So when you buff a unit like Mustang, it, it's, uh, it's a scary thing. But I don't think the. I, I or I think the three percent increase is, is fine. It's it's not a lot, and it will give the Mustang some some value in the game. Then the fortress buff, which is pretty interesting. I don't know what I think about this because I use forts a lot. I think they are quite strong. The fortress is another unit that, like the Overlord, if it's if it's a little bit too good it it's so easy to mass like it's my favorite strategy i i just build fortresses and i'm very good at using the forts but it's a pretty toxic unit when you have uh, multiple angles of uh, 
or mul multiple pathways to make the game in a direction where you can mass fortresses. And one of the problems with massing fortresses is that you don't have enough chaff clear when you are trying to build them. And these, all, all of these changes just uh, increases the fortress chaff clear. And then the attack is decreased. I would have maybe taken an other route here and buffed the attack so it one shots sledgehammers more reliably. But I think the forts might be really strong now. Let's see. But it's a weird direction, I think, with the fourth buff. And the crawler. They are nerfing the subterranean blitz like heavily. The damage reduction is dropped from 70 to 50 and the price is increased from 250 to 300. Oh, it's, it's attack is increased and the HP is increased. What? That's crazy. I think the crawler is one of the best units in the game. Along with Overlord and Sledgehammer. Seems really weird to me. Maybe they are like... Uh, their thinking is that they are buffing the baseline crawler and then just... Nerfing the subterranean blitz so they cannot become too strong. Oh, well, it's an uh, interesting thought. But I think the most of the subterranean blitz's power came from the overpowered photon coating. Like if you had like level two or three crawlers with subterranean bliss behind your boat as a late chaff, it was super, super good. So let's see, this this might be a good good change, but I fear the crawlers would are super good right now. That's an interesting one. Have to see how it goes. Then the storm caller, the incendiary bomb price is increased from 300 to 350. And people have been complaining about the fire a lot. And uh, I don't like this direction. I think the, the storm caller fire is fine. But I think oil is the problem, like combined with the fire. So I'd, I'd rather see that they would touch the oil somehow, rather than uh, nerf the incendiary bombs. But I guess it's good. Less fire, the less fire the better, I guess. And then the aerial specialist is finally getting touched. So last time the aerial specialist, it, it was the same, but you get range to, to the air units. And now you get HP and attack. And this is a very good change. This is uh, something that I proposed before in some of my videos, I think, or I, I've been thinking about this that they should remove the range buff, because it's so crazy in uh, especially Overlord versus Overlord battles, and then it makes raids a lot more, a lot, lot better. But I feel like with this, all of these changes, and they are removing the HP bonus from the Aerial Specialist, I don't think the Aerial Specialist is gonna be a good specialist after this. It's gonna be okay, but it's not gonna be good. But I think this is uh, this good change. Like, I really don't wanna see any more boats and raids and air units, so I, I like it. But maybe they kinda over nerfed it. Let's, we, we will see. So yeah, this kinda very interesting changes, I have to say. Like, I think the, the direction is very good. 
on these balance changes, but uh, like I said, I would have taken uh, different routes to some of them. And some of them don't make sense to be me, but maybe they are balancing the game for a different MMR that, than what I'm playing in. But I don't think that's a wise decision to balance a game like, like this. Or like that. Yeah, so let's let's hop in to the test server and I'll I'll show some some things like the new units and the UI. I already recorded it to the previous video, so if you have seen this it's it's the same. So this is how the new UI looks. There's lots of uh, small animations and stuff like that. It's a lot better looking, in my opinion. It's a big upgrade. And let's go to the testing grounds. So I can show you something. And then the new rare units. I have a spotlight video on each of them, if you want to watch. And I also have a video of me playing versus Sako, if you wanna watch, watch that. But let's go over them quickly. I'm not gonna put them in battle, or maybe I will put them in battle after this. But the Typhoon is like a big Mustang. And I think all of these technologies are crap. The homing missile deals way too uh, little damage. It's kinda useless unless you want to overwhelm enemy anti-missile devices or something like that. The barrier was actually pretty nice. And it's 12k, but it's it's two guys, so the total is 24k. So it's better than a hacker barrier, and this cost 300, the whole unit. And the aerial specialization was, was pretty bad, because this guy doesn't have a range upgrade. So this isn't enough to kill overlords, it isn't enough to reach ranged phoenixes, it just deletes wasps very well. And the armor might be good, but this guy deletes mustangs like super heavily. This kills like fangs and wasps and mustangs really fast and it's, it's pretty good versus crawlers. Then the fire badger. Uh, this is like a mix between Sledgehammer and Vulcan. So it's just grill scrollers. It has range, then it has a napalm. And the napalm works like it puts fire here, basically. It's pretty good versus high level subterranean blitz scrollers. I don't think this guy has enough range for ignite. And the field maintenance is <clears throat> actually pretty good on this one because this needs to be your frontline tank and it isn't tanky enough for that I feel like so maybe with the field maintenance it is but I didn't like this unit that much but it's pretty cheap so if you can connect this to crawlers it, it's gonna be good and this was my favorite the saber dude that looks like a GDI mammoth tank, or was it GDI? I don't remember. And uh, it has range enhancement, launcher overload, missile interceptor, and double shot. And I played with this a little. And the launcher overload is actually pretty nice because this guy's tanky, it's 15k HP, cost 200. So it's a lot of HP for the money. And this deletes like sledgehammer, steel balls, stuff like that. And with the launcher overload, it's pretty good versus crawlers also. But uh, I would buy this only for the missile interceptor, maybe. Or maybe against sledgehammers. But it's gonna be good if the enemy has something like storm callers and sledges. Like two things, this can be good versus. So I think this will see a lot of play. But these these guys, I was not impressed. 
Maybe the typhoon is good with the barrier. Or maybe they both can be good now if the Vulcan unlock cost get nerfed. So this will take the role of the Vulcan then. So here is just a lot of stuff that these units are good against. And this guy it's 300 supply, this 200, this 200. So this is like 200 supply versus 800 supply. And uh, so they are quite quite heavily outmatched in the supply numbers. So let's see how they do. Like these these guys will delete everything like these fangs, wasp scrollers. This guy got heavily deleted by the way. That's a bit too many tanks for these guys. Yeah, but if if you wanna see more of these units, watch the spotlight videos and me playing versus Sako. And let's see, I will make another video when when there's gonna be like a, like more patch notes. And this is the new video you have been watching. We got the patch notes and I made an update to the video, so there's not gonna be a new video. Thanks for watching.